it's recording. Okay, so great. first I'll introduce everybody. Welcome. Um, tonight we are having a presentation on apprenticeships and other pathways. And we have three guests to present. The first one is Adrienne Young from uh, the Maryland Food Bank. And she's going to talk about a food works program. Um, next, we will have Logan Dean with the Division of the Workforce Development, and he's the ma program manager of apprenticeships and training, and he'll tell us a little bit about youth apprenticeships and some other things. And then we have Nikki Rogers, who is the coordinator of technical training at CCBC. So we will have them present, and then we'll have questions at the end. Okay, go ahead, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, as you mentioned, our Food Works program is a workforce development program of the Maryland Food Bank. So what that just means is um, we train individuals um, with basic culinary skills um, and we assist them with getting employment in the culinary industry. Um, our ages of our program are um, 18 and up, and I'll get to the requirements in a second. Um, but uh, we have a partnership with CCBC. And um, so we offer we offer our curriculum, um, our curriculum, but we um, partner with them with recruitment um, for the program. Our program is 12 weeks long, so three months long. Um, and students are required to get 480 hours of practical and um, technical training. Our program is free of charge for our students. Um, they get uh, what we refer to as a scholarship from CCBC. Um, we are funded by uh, grants um, from SNAP ENT program and also uh, with the EARN uh, program. Our students, um, like I said, are required to get 480 hours of academic and practical training, and they have the opportunity to earn uh, two industry certifications um, in our program, the first being the Surf Safe Food Handler Certification. Uh, they obtain that within the first week of the program. That is sort of their ticket into the kitchen. And then um, as they're working on those technical skills um, and learning um, the the training in culinary, they're also working towards their manager certification. Students are also getting 10 weeks of career development classes, so job readiness classes where they are uh, doing resume workshops, um, smart goal setting, uh, financial literacy classes with the Bank of America. Um, we also do mock interviews uh, with actual employer partners that sometimes turn into um, employment opportunities for our students. We have an on-site case manager um, who is more of a student advocate, and she's there to um, assist students with any barriers um, to success in our program, um, with accomplishing any goals, um, connecting to resources in the community, um, just there as, like I said, an advocate and um, a support uh, from start to finish. And then uh, one of my other roles, other than um, enrollment, um, is job placement assistance. So. Um, helping students get their resumes tight um, and tailoring, tailoring them to um, an industry job that they're looking for. Um, and then um, just placing them or um, hooking, up, hooking them up with um, employers uh, in the community um, of their, you know, of their uh, liking. So our eligibility criteria, you must be 18 years old um, to participate in our program. You must be a Maryland resident, and that's excluding Prince George's counties and Montgomery counties. Um, and the reason for that is that they are serviced by the Capital Food Bank. Um, you must be available for classes Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 p.m. So we are a full-time program, um, no exceptions. Um, and then you must be um, willing to obtain employment and able to obtain employment um, in Maryland um, and in the culinary industry, because as I uh, stated, that is one of the main requirements um, and purposes of our program. Um, we have a very strict attendance policy. Um, our program is, like I said, 12 weeks long. Uh, there's a lot of information packed down to those 12 weeks. So missing um, a day in our program is like missing a week in the program. So we have a very strict attendance policy that we adhere to um, with our students. Our program is a hybrid model. 
Um, and just, I'm gonna take you through a brief week um, in our program. So our Mondays and Tuesdays are online classes. We start our day at 9 a.m. Um, with a check-in with our students. Um, and then they are doing uh, Zoom classes with us and then guided um, assignments through our online curriculum that uh, called Ruby uh, ruby.com. Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays are in-person in person, hands-on days, so they're in the kitchen on those days. Everything that they learn on Mondays and Tuesdays um, in the curriculum prepare them for what they're going to be doing Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, so it's very important that they complete that work because we have a model where students are exposed to a skill three times. Um, they're learning about it, they get a demonstration through the chef trainers, and then they actually carry out those skills themselves. Um, our location on um, the western side of Maryland um, is at Healthorpe uh, Farms Road. That's the Maryland Food Bank headquarters. And then we also have a location on um, the Eastern Shore um, at the American Job Center in Salisbury. Our program is set up in three phases. Um, uh, orientation phase, uh, uh, main phase and graduation phase, if you will. Um, so at each phase, they are learning um, certain skills in the program. And then we also have graduation um, or what we call phase up ceremonies to graduate them into the next phase of the program um, in order to get to graduation. There is a question in the chat box, if, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Are students allowed to bring one-on-one -on -one support to help these opportunities? Um, unfortunately, with the way that our class is set up, um, the size of our kitchen um, and the sizes of our class, uh, there won't there wouldn't be um, any uh, an opportunity for um, a person to bring um, a support with them. Does okay. that answer the question? Yes. This uh, program, our program has a, a, a level of independence that's needed to complete the program, um, meaning that it's accelerated and very fast paced. Um, this uh, slide, this next slide shows um, some of the things that the students learn in the first two phases of the programs being knife skills, um, herb identification, so learning the difference between parsley and cilantro, for example. Um, and this last picture is a picture of the emulsification process. So students um, are required to make um, a vinaigrette and mayo from scratch. So they have to, you know, make it with the ingredients um, from start to finish, and then they have to hold the bowl upside down. So this is a student holding her bowl of mayo over the um, chef trainer's head. So we make sure that students have everything they need to be successful for our program. First being the uniforms, they get a full chef uniform, chef hat, chef pants, chef jacket, um, and slip resistant shoes. Uh, we supply all school supplies. So um, that's pens, pencils, notebooks. Um, we also provide students with a Chromebook um, to borrow for the duration of the program if they, don't, if they do not have a device at home. And then we offer two types of stipends, the first being a transportation stipend. Those transportation stipends are in the form of a gas card. Um, so that's a shell gas card for drivers um, and those getting rides. And then um, we also supply charm passes for our transit riser, riders. Um, we also have a morning shuttle um, that picks up at Mondawmin Mall and at John Hopkins um, at Monument and Broadway. And then our last type of stipend is an attendance stipend. So students earn up to $125 per week, so $25 per day um, for attending um, class every day. So each day that they um, are not in attendance, that is deducted from the $20, $125. We also provide weekly food boxes for our students. Um, so they're um, a banana-sized box of um, produce, fruits, vegetables, um, a protein, um, non perishable items, so that could be cereals, grains, um, noodles, just uh, grocery items to um, help while in the program, because we do realize that this program is a sacrifice as you cannot work a full-time job while in the program due to the hours. We 
We have several hiring partners um, in the area that work with our program. So they not only hire our students, but they participate in the learning of our students. So that's um, participating in mock interviews. They may um, host us for field trips um, or sometimes come in for guest, guest presentations or even guest chef presentations um, and take students through cooking lessons. Um, upon completion of the program, uh, students can look forward to having front and back of the house management techniques, job placement assistance, and then they all graduate with their Surf Safe uh, Food Handler certification, their Surf Safe Manager certification, uh, Ruby certifications, and then a completion of certificate from CCBC. Our enrollment process is a fairly easy and quick process. Um, the first two steps are interchangeable, so students could either on, uh, apply online um, first or attend a virtual or in-person information session. Um, and pretty much the, the session is what we're doing now um, to have the, the student the opportunity to learn about the program and ask any questions they may have. From there, if they decide that if this is something that they would like to do, um, they would then sit for an interview with myself and the case manager of the program. After that interview, um, in about a week or so, um, they will receive a letter from me stating their status of their interview. Um, and that's after we discuss their interview notes with the team. Um, and one thing I always tell the students, you must be accepted into the program to participate. So um, you must complete the entire enrollment process. Uh, we are a drug and alcohol free program, so um, we just let students know that during the hours of the program um, to refrain from um, any recreational activities, drug activities, um, and we also stress uh, that it's due to the safety in the kitchen as well. And that concludes the presentation. Our next cohort is in June of 2024. Thank you, Adrian. Um, it sounds like this is a great way to get some basic training in the culinary field pretty quickly. You guys pack a lot into 12 weeks. A lot, yes. Yeah. Um, if you could send me the PowerPoint um, when you get a chance, mm -hmm. then I can send to participants Absolutely. if you're okay with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, did anybody have any questions for Adrian? Okay, thank you. Okay, now we will move on to Mr. Logan Dean. All right, thank you so much uh, for having me here today and for putting this together. I'm really excited to talk to you all. So my name is Logan Dean. I am Program Manager for Apprenticeship and Training here at the Maryland Department of Labor. Uh, we are a state executive agency, and we are the agency in charge of administering, building, and monitoring apprenticeship programs here in the state of Maryland. At any given time, we have about 12,000 apprentices in Maryland who are earning and learning on the job and uh, getting skills, getting a new career, and getting a start on their future. That's spread out over about 200 programs, thousands of employers, lots of different industries, occupations, and tons of opportunity. So I'm just going to go through today just a little bit of some background on what an apprenticeship is. Um, how you can get connected and also some opportunities for youth. Um, give me just one second to pull up my screen. All right, there we go. So what is um, an apprenticeship program? Um, it's a little bit different than maybe some of the other training programs or you know uh, educational programs you might be familiar with because apprenticeship is actually at its core paid work. So an apprenticeship is a job from day one. On your very, very first day when you sign up, you're not just showing up to class or showing up to school, you're showing up to a job. Every apprenticeship opportunity is gonna include generally a full-time workload. That's gonna be about 40 hours a week or about 2000 hours a year. And you're paid at least Maryland state minimum wage for every apprenticeship program in Maryland. So that's gonna be at least $15 an hour um, all across the state, regardless of your occupation or the type of program. Apprenticeships include on the job training. So during those, those hours while you're working and while you're uh, on a job site with an employer, you're receiving direct training in whatever occupation you're trying to learn. Um, in an apprenticeship, you, know, you are 
specifically learning one trade or one occupation throughout the duration of your program. So the photo here on the screen, um, this young woman is probably a mechanic or an automotive technician. So her apprenticeship program would be teaching her how to do that trade, how to become a mechanic or an automotive technician over the course of uh, a number of years or a number of months. All apprentices operate under direct supervision and direct mentorship from someone called a journey worker, also sometimes called a master, um, it's called a mentor, lots of different names, but essentially you will have a one-to-one -one relationship with a qualified professional in that occupation who will train you from day to day on how to carry out that occupation, how to develop those skills, uh, and how to become a qualified certified professional. Along with that on the job training and supervision, you'll also have education provided to you, which we call related instruction, and that is direct coursework, direct classes that relate specifically to that job. So for example, for a mechanic or an automotive technician, you may be taking classes in um, you know, the electronic systems that help our cars run. You may be taking classes in welding, um, fabrication, uh, systems alignment, all kinds of different things that go into the actual operation of vehicles, more on kind of the theory and um, the background on the trade. So it reinforces what you're doing on the job while you're at work. But remember, you're an employee the entire time. So you go to work all day. You may take classes during the course of your work day. You may take them in the evening or on the weekend. Um, but your courses are going to be directly connected with your employment, and they're going, the two are going to reinforce each other. Finally, apprenticeship programs always result in a nationally recognized credential. Um, for some programs, that may be a license or a degree, but for all programs, it's going to be a certificate of apprenticeship completion. So we here at the Maryland Department of Labor, we actually will issue you sort of a diploma when you finish your apprenticeship program. It's a big, giant certificate. It looks like a high school diploma, and it comes with a tear-off card that says your name, and it says the occupation that you completed your apprenticeship for. And that's a way of saying to the world, to employers, to industry, that you are a qualified, trained professional who went through a rigorous and standardized apprenticeship program backed by us here at the Maryland Department of Labor, and you can take that anywhere in the country. All apprenticeship programs are going to be at least one year long, so at least 12 months, and some of them are many years. Some of them are four or five years and are comparable to a college degree. For example, one of our biggest programs in the state, one of the most common occupations is electrician. A lot of electricians get their start as apprentices. Electrical programs are all going to be four years long because there's a license associated with the program. That uh, license requires you to have 8,000 hours on the job, which takes place over four years, and 576 classroom hours, which is your related instruction that goes along with your education. And all throughout that time, you are paid as an employee, as apprentice, uh, under your company. So many, many of our programs include licenses from anywhere from plumbers to electricians to nurses, all get licenses through their programs. And many of our programs also include degrees. So it's not just um, you know, a college or an apprenticeship or a trade, but can be both as well. For example, we have a number of apprenticeship programs for licensed practical nurses. Uh, we have a number of apprenticeship programs for counseling positions that include associate's degrees or college level certifications. And those can be built right into your program. It's also a really great opportunity for people who want to um, you know, explore a career, get some experience, and then maybe go back for education later on. Many of these programs will include degrees at no cost or very low cost, and there is never any cost to participate in an apprenticeship program because, again, you are an employee and you are paid throughout the duration of your program. Here in Maryland, we also have another opportunity that we often call Youth Apprenticeship, but it goes by the name of the Apprenticeship Maryland Program, or AMP. It's this red banner you see on the wall here behind me. So the Apprenticeship Maryland Program starts actually while you're still in high school. This program is available in all 24 of Maryland's public high schools, um, sorry, public school districts across the state, including Baltimore County. Uh, and what it is, is it's a program that starts junior year continues on to senior year if you'd like, and you'll work a total of 450 hours paid on the job and be trained in the exact same way you would for a full-blown you know, adult apprenticeship program. And the coursework that you take may come from your school, may come from a community college, or may come directly from your employer. But again, it's related directly to the occupation that you're learning. And you complete all of that before graduation. So you actually receive credit towards your diploma, credit towards graduation, paid wages while you're in training, 450 hours of work experience or more. Um, and of course, hopefully a job that you can retain on past high school. Uh, we have about a thousand students across Maryland today who are in youth apprenticeship under the Apprenticeship Maryland program, and many who will go on to work for those employers or continue on into registered apprenticeship, adult apprenticeship when they're finished. So how do you get started? How, what's kind of the next step? So one of the easiest ways to find an apprenticeship, it's just like finding a job, is to reach out to a program and talk to them about when they're hiring and when they're bringing on new apprentices. 
Here at the state, we operate this tool called the Apprenticeship Locator, which you can see here. You can also find it at mdapprenticeships.com. I'm just going to jump to the locator really quick just to give you guys a, a little bit of a kind of tutorial on how to use it. So when you follow that link or you head to mdapprenticeships.com, it's going to bring you right here to this landing page. And you'll see this Be an Apprentice button. That's how you open the locator. So the locator is very, very easy to use. Uh, you'll see a list here of all the counties in Maryland. So we're going to select Baltimore County, but you can select as many as you would like. The type of apprenticeship you're looking for, whether it's regular or high school, we're going to go with regular. And then whether you want to search by occupation, by industry, or by sponsor, which is the program, like the, the name of the program or the company that's going to sponsor you. So we'll search by occupation. All right, so now here you can see these are a list of all of the different occupations with apprenticeship programs in Baltimore County or in the area of Baltimore County. And as you can see, there's a ton. Bricklayer, carpenter, construction craft laborer, HVAC, machinist, millwright, steam fitter, stone finisher. There's all these different titles. So we're going to go with electrician just as a little bit of a demonstration. Hit search. And now we can see search results for programs that are accepting electricians or maybe accepting electricians soon. Uh, these are programs that have reached out to us at the department and indicated that they want outreach. They're looking to hire. They're looking to recruit. So you can come here and kind of get an idea of who's around. Um, if you spot one that seems like maybe a good fit, you know, you can start to do some research online, start to Google some of these companies and see what comes up. Um, but Associated Builders and Contractors is the first one here. So we're going to click on View Details. And as you can see, it provides us with uh, an address. It gives us some information about what electricians do at Associated Builders and Contractors. The program is 8,000 hours, which means it'll take you four years, 2,000 hours a year. Uh, you would work 40 hours a week and the minimum starting wage is $15 an hour for those positions. This sponsor does require you to be 18 when you start and have a high school diploma and they may have additional requirements as well. So you would reach out to Siona Glasgow right here, her email is provided and phone number and this is exactly how you get started. So you reach out directly to the program, talk to them about their timelines, talk to them about their hiring, when they're taking new apprentices, um, if they're taking new apprentices. Each program is going to do things a little bit differently and each program may have different opportunities that are right for you. Um, so that is really kind of the, the jumping off point, the way that you get started in apprenticeship. As I said, they are a job, they're a commitment, they're a full-time responsibility, but it's an amazing, and you know, really, really beneficial pathway for people who are considering what to do after high school, or even for youth apprentices, what to do in those last couple of years as you're transitioning into the world of work. Uh, and one thing I can say as kind of an endorsement for apprenticeship, we do a lot of collecting of data, a lot of studying on what happens to our apprentices. Um, so we had a cohort in 2012 of apprentices, about 10,000 apprentices that went through the system in 2012. And we were able to track their wages over time to see how they fared you know, in the job market after their apprenticeship was over. And uh, within five years after finishing their program, that 2012 cohort, their average wage was about $85,000 a year for those apprentices five years after their program, which is a you know really, really great wage, it's great pay. And these are for mostly positions that don't require a high school, or sorry, don't require a college degree. Uh, and mostly for people that did not go down a college pathway, that apprenticeship was kind of the end of their education. And now they're in this really good paying, really um, high trajectory career that can carry them forward. So if you ever have any questions about how to get started, about where these programs are, what some of the requirements are, or just want more information about apprenticeship, please you know visit us online, mdapprenticeships.com. Um, send me an email, reach out to our team. We do have apprenticeship navigators all across the state who can help you access these programs as well. And so I'm happy to provide more information. But thank you all so much for being here and for having us. Thank you. Yeah, nothing like earning while you learn. <laughs> That's hard to beat. Thank you, Logan. And um, if you could send me those slides, that would be great. Okay. Any questions? Okay, we'll turn it over to Nikki Rogers from CCBC. Hello, thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, so like Logan, I'm also gonna be talking about apprenticeships, but I'm gonna be talking mostly about um, specific uh, construction trade apprenticeships that you um, can apply to. Um, so let me share my screen. Okay, so it's uh, registered apprenticeships at CCBC. So uh, what is a registered apprenticeship? 
Um, so it's helpful to understand what it's not. It's not career engagement. It's not an internship or cooperative ed education. Um, and it's not career exposure. It's not job shadowing, not mentoring. Um, it is on the job training plus classroom related instruction. So it is two different pieces, like Logan said. Um, so CCBC offers, they have traditional ones, which are in the construction trades, which is what I'm mostly going to be talking about because they're the ones that I, um, I coordinate. And then we have a few non-traditional or not construction trade uh, apprenticeships as well. Um, so this is uh, real world learning um, and it is earn while you learn. So you have people have a full-time job um, and they're going to school at full time. So um, these are permanent jobs. Um, so once you finish, you can stay at the job if you if you want to continue with that job once you finish your apprenticeship. Um, so on the job training, um, so each apprenticeship um, with CCBC, um, the construction trade ones are uh, three to five years. Um, you apprentice under um, a, the supervision of a trained journeyman. So it is um, one on one training. Um, they provide specific on the job training experiences and they demonstrate the proper techniques um, and how to um, utilize these skills for your career. Um, and then the other part of it is classroom related instruction. Um, you're required to take a specific number of hours depending on your um, apprenticeship. Um, it emphasizes theory and practice. There's lab work. Um, the, um, the programs typically run September through May like a, um, like a regular high school year. Um, some go all year round, but most of them are traditional September through May. Um, depends on the program. Some are um, once a week, some are an entire week. And then you go to school, you go one week school, one week um, uh, work, one week school. Some are like you take um, evening classes. So they, they all vary depending on what you, uh, what the program is. Um, they're all over the place, all across the Baltimore metropolitan area. Some um, actually have their classes at CCBC and others have their classes at their uh, training facilities. Um, so to become an apprentice, um, you, um, the sponsor um, accepts you or an employer hires you and then, um, and then you apply to the program or um, you're accepted in the program and then you find um, employment through the program. Um, uh, tuition and fees and book costs um, vary depending on the program. They all have costs, but they are generally covered by um, either the sponsor or the employer or there's grants. There's all kinds of things to cover it. So most of the time the student doesn't pay for the tuition, but there there is a cost for each one. Um, in Maryland, it can be an employer, a union organizer, a trade association, um, all these different things can serve as the apprenticeship training sponsors, and they must meet the Maryland Apprenticeship and Training Council's established regulations, which Logan is from. <laughs> um, so there's benefits and there's considerations about um, applying to an apprenticeship. Um, you have to, it's, it's very rigorous. You have to be able to be a full-time employee and um, attend school uh, part-time. And so they, they can be very rigorous. Um, it does build a career. It's not just a job, it's building um, a career for the future. Um, the wages start out uh, relatively low and then they do um, incrementally um, increase as um, the years go on. Um, with CCBC, you do have an opportunity to take what you've learned and um, converted into credits. Uh, we have an articulation agreement with um, different um, apprenticeships. And so between um, six and 30 credits, you can um, you can transfer your learning to um, credits towards an associate's degree. So uh, three years would be 18 and five year program would be 30. So that's half of an associate's degree. So it's a great stepping stone to um, to earn an associate's degree if, if that is what you'd like to do. Um, but like I said before, it's quite a time commitment. So you really have to consider your um, family dynamics, personal goals, professional goals, um, all those different things, because it is um, quite a commitment. Um, so construction trade apprenticeships, you definitely need to be dedicated and devoted because it is a major time commitment. Um, you have to use your hands and your mind. Um, you generally need to have good math skills. Uh, you have to be dependable. Um, you have to enjoy variety. 
um, because the construction trades, they, they go by their contracts a lot of times. So you could be in one location in Maryland one part of the year, another location another part of the year. So you have to be able to be mobile. Um, so you do make good money, but um, it's, you definitely have to work for it. Um, so CCBC has 10 construction trade apprenticeships that partner with us. Um, most of them do require a driver's license because, like I said, you do have to usually travel um, for work sometimes. Um, sometimes you're close, sometimes you're far away. It really depends on where, um, where the job is at the time. Um, so we don't um, do the applications here. You do contact the uh, partner directly to set up a tour, an information session, um, or to apply with them. Um, generally, the, the process is um, you apply. There's usually some sort of test in math, uh, reading, spatial relations. They have an interview. Um, sometimes they, get, they have a drug test. It really depends on the apprenticeship. So I'm going to go through a couple of the apprenticeships. I'm going to go through the apprenticeships that we work with. Um, the first one is Baltimore Electricians. These, this is a union um, apprenticeship. It is electrical. They have two programs. They have a three-year um, VDB program, and then they have their traditional five-year um, electrical wireman um, program. Uh, sheet Metal Workers, this is another union. This is a five-year program. So they um, perform architectural sheet metal work, fabrication, installation, servicing of heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems, shipbuilding. Um, you do do welding like the picture shows. Um, so that is a, um, that's a five-year program, just like the um, electricians. Um, iron workers, that's another union. This is a four-year program. Um, so the iron workers do all kinds of um, different fabrication of buildings, um, bridges, they um, place reinforcing bars um, in, in all kinds of um, uh, personal as well as, um, as large buildings, hospitals, towers, bridges. So they, they do all kinds of uh, different things. Um, the Mid-Atlantic Carpenters Training, Session, Training Center, that's another union. Um, this is a four-year program. They have three different um, Three different programs there. They have the traditional carpenters four-year program, but it's not just um, working with wood. Um, they they help to fabricate houses. They they weld, mold plastic, saw wood, form concrete, build scaffolding. Um, so so they do a lot more than just um, build um, build houses and build bookshelves and things like that. They they do a lot a lot more than I um, even realized when I first uh, accepted this position. Um, then there's also the pile drivers. They, um, they install, repair, and remove um, the large uh, piles and foundations of bridges, um, large buildings, um, they, the, the giant structures that have to um, hold up these buildings is what, what, they, what they do. Um, and then they also have the trade show, which is a three-year program. So the um, construct and install the exterior, in exterior and interior of um, convention exhibits. So they're the ones that put down and put up and take down the, um, the structures and trade shows. Uh, plumbers and steam fitters, uh, this is another union. It's a five-year program. Um, so they do anything related to uh, plumbing and steam fitting, uh, commercial heating, cooling, refrigeration, welders, riggers, um, th so that they do all kinds of things within that uh, within that trade. Um, independent electrical contractors, this is a non-union uh, program. They uh, have a four-year electrical program and a three-year telecommu telecommunications technician program. Um, these guys do online and um, in-person training, so they usually do uh, one training online and one training in person a week. Um, Maryland Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Contractors, this is another non-union. It is a four-year program. Um, this one and the previous one, IEC, they do make use of CCBC classrooms, so you will um, find them um, at CCBC locations throughout the year. Um, operating Engineers, this is another union. This is um, our short, shortest program. This is a three-year program. Um, these guys are heavy equipment operators, um, welders, construction industry. They're the ones that operate the giant cranes and and different things that that you that you see at uh, construction sites. 
Um, Associated Builders and Contractors of Greater Baltimore. Um, this is a, a large program. They're four-year programs, and they have um, uh, quite a few different um, occupations, uh, carpentry, electrician, HVAC, pipe fitter, plumber. Um, so they have quite a few different um, trades if you're interested in that, in, in whatever you're interested in. They have, they have quite a few options. Um, so if you can't decide yet on an apprenticeship that you want to do, um, CCBC um, partners with um, the ABC Greater Baltimore to do um, like a pre-apprenticeship program. So you can do um, a core of two months that will um, give you some of the basic skills. And then if you like any of the things that you learned within those two months, then you can do um, a specialty eight months of um, training in that specialty skill. And then once you've completed that, then you have a um, you have a, a much better um, chance of um, being accepted into the ABC program if if you choose to do that. Um, then there are, like I said, several non traditional programs. Uh, CCBC is working on um, starting up several non traditional programs. So there are um, a few currently going in healthcare. Um, there's medical front office, medical assistant, patient care. Um, we're working on um, a manufacturing one, industrial maintenance technician, um, alcohol and drug uh, counselor. And then um, in the future, they're, they're currently working on an IT and uh, cybersecurity one as well. So that's still in the works. Um, and these are the, the contacts for the different ones. I'm the registered apprenticeship. We do have a person that handles the uh, non-traditional apprenticeships um, and then uh, a gentleman that helps with um, industrial maintenance. And that is it. Okay, thank you so much, Nikki. That was very informative. You have a lot to offer there. Thank you. Um, well, thank you all for showing up. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording.